I have never what seen that one before. What are you guys what? doing? Sure. All right, it's fine. Well, it's a Friday feeling. Good evening, Mzansi, and welcome to the Friday installment of Trending SA. The week is officially over, yes. But you know what? We're here mm -hmm. to ease you into the weekend. Mm. My name is Mo Flavor. Some call me Mo Fizzle. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm going to get a lot of flag for that one. But um, I could never, ever add so much flavor to the season alone, all right? <laughs> Helping me do that, setting the trends, and looking at some of the topics in motion is the mother of hip hop, hippity hopping. That's right. Hippity hopping and hoppity hipping. Mother of salt Love. and pepper. Mother, mother of, of sweet and, and sour. 100%. <laughs> Do you have any others? Uh, no, I uh, Mother of fame and fortune, yeah, all the nice things. Yeah, fame and, fortune. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, um, next to her, we have the satirical and dare I say, the sultry Lesicho. Dare I say, sultry must cut it if you nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lesicho Minaj, and of course, <laughs> the emperor of Imlazi. I, I trust him to do his own intro because he is my play after all. And I decided to actually dress like a game ranger because we've got a, a tiger, a leopard <laughs> in the house. There's a tiger in there. Please, I please, don't I'll understand it's what's going oh, on. Oh, you don't even know, know what it is. It's a but tiger. I, I, I'm, I'm, like, that's a cat. It's uh, a tiger. I don't, okay. play, I don't play with uh, animals. You know what? You need to do better, Emperor. <laughs> I, this is not the one. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So this past week, social media was abuzz with stories that uh, emanate from the Super Bowl, from the underwhelming halftime performance by pop R&B singer The Weeknd to Jasmine O'Sullivan belting out the American anthem like a vocal powerhouse that she is, as well as these are the bold scenes right here. Hey, mm. wow. Mm. So the story goes, now, this guy saw a bet on a popular betting site offering Mola to anyone willing to run onto the field during the Super Bowl. He got as many people as he could to place a bet <laughs> on the site and use his friend as a decoy during the game to distract security guards. And then he <laughs> ran onto the field. Now, Brother Man has earned himself a criminal record but he also earned himself a staggering $370,000, which is, wait for it, 5.4 million runs. So I want to know from you guys, would you run onto the maybe Soccer City pitch during a Chiefs Pirates derby for 5.4 million? He did it in, what's that, a leotard? That's like a thong. I would go butt naked. <laughs> I would oh, 5. go 5. for 5.4. Wow. I can get I can get a Rolls Royce for 5.4 million. Okay. And then yeah. you guys will be passing there in your little polos and your picantos and I'll be there in a Rolls Royce. I'll take it one step higher. <laughs> I'll jump out of a plane. <laughs> butt, butt naked. Butt naked. Okay. Okay. With nothing on, land center pitch. Just as the players were. As they're scoring a goal. Me, wow. I run onto the field like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is how You're I the first person to stand <laughs> on trending a safe, by the way. The camera got it. <laughs> I don't know, hey, I don't know. I don't even know if I can say anything at this point. Oh my goodness, guys. I mean, would you, would would you not? I think if you were no, story guys. sent shock waves amongst the Navy, and you have to say it like that. After it was reported that French designer House LVMH and Rihanna have decided to part ways two years after they birthed the Fenty Fashion House. And the two parties have uh, excited that Fenty's high-end ready-to-wear collection wasn't a match for her broad fan base. It's now, so guys, sad. it's not all doom and gloom. I can see you already tearing up, but it's not doom and gloom for the Navy. Did I say it right? <laughs> Navy. Yeah, the Navy. 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 <laughs> and the company released the statement, take a look. LVMH and Rihanna reaffirmed their ambition to concentrate on the growth and the long-term development of Fenty ecosystem, mm. focusing on cosmetics, skincare, and lingerie. Mm. Love it. However, you know you guys, no? you guys took to social media to vent your frustrations, and this is what the tubes had to say. Jeff, see, I can, I can spell that Jeff, that's white spelling of mm. Jeff, yeah. Says, wow. first woman, <laughs> first black woman, first Caribbean woman to create an original brand at LVMH with Fenty. And they shut it down during Black History Month, SMH. Oh. 
And this is what Marge had to say. She said, it's really sad that LVMH is parting ways with Fenty because the brand had a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. I don't think price points were the issue. I think what went wrong is the simple fact that designs were a little dated. Mm -hmm. And Yela Ayu had this to say. She's got Fenty Beauty, mm -hmm. Fenty Skin, mm -hmm. Savage Fenty, mm -hmm. Fenty Cars, oh. Fenty Solar Panels, <laughs> Fenty <laughs> Skyscraper Architect Fam, mm -mm. Fenty Tree Installation, <laughs> Fenty <laughs> Jewelry, <laughs> Fenty Island Cuisine, and Fenty Organics. Oh, and a record deal. She'll be okay. <laughs> so, in light of Rihanna uh, and LVMH parting ways, mm. which South African celebrities do you think should actually start a clothing line, guys. Oh, Let me tell you something. Anybody that follows Lamise Holworthy, mm -hmm. right? Live M, yep. mm -hmm. Metro, mm -hmm. Club DJ, mm -hmm. will know that she's absolutely fashionable. Yeah. That is how Coolie Channel was said. Like, yeah. Fashionable. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and I've seen a lot of women follow her for her style, even yeah. before she got onto TV. Yeah. The haircuts, the look, uh -huh. you know, and I just think she's got that. What is it? Are Je you ne pitching her line right is, now? Is it Je ne sais quoi? <laughs> it is. Come on, Lamise. <laughs> don't Je sleep on yourself, quoi. girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Le um, mine is not a South African. I don't know if you asked for South African, but Lizzo. Mm. I just, for me, it's always going to be the big girls creating fashion. I don't mm. want more, like, I'm going to the opening of um, Parliament. I want fashion. <laughs> but I feel like Lizzo will give us big girl mm. fashion. <laughs> not the opening of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think, um, I, I would say Ricky Rick. He's, mm. He is super, super stylish. The yeah. only man who's looked that good in a dook. He did that shoot years ago mm. where he looked really, really dope. Mm -hmm. um, and he's kind of stuck started it, I guess. Um, he's got his uh, event that he does and he's released like a sort of uh, NBA oh. merchandise type, mm. a basketball, basketball uh, mm. merchandise. So I'd like to see it grow and see what else he could do, but I think he'd add where he's close. You know, as a, as, a, as a plus size model, as a plus size model, I would love to actually check out my Instagram. I, I model now. Mm. As a plus size, I would love to see somebody like Rick Ross or a, a, like a plus size guy actually manufacture or design stuff because we all have to buy uh, T-shirts where true. Lunga Shabalala and then buy T-shirts. Oh. And you are always doing this oh. as us. You know what I'm saying? And oh. they're always running into your folds and whatever. We need somebody to fold. just design <laughs> something that will just sit on us and like pad, proper pants oh. that are not that long. You oh. know, what I'm there's a lot of problems with, with plus size fashion and we need yes. somebody who's actually out there who's got the money to design stuff for us, oh. by us. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> Speaking of money, we've got to make some. So we are going on a quick ad break. And when we come back, we'll be in conversation with. Sorry, I was drooling. Sandbox <laughs> prop, the beast. And then, Anita, we go all the way to Nigeria to talk music with LAX. You don't want to miss it. You're Remember, so thirsty. the hashtag is set on three. See you in a bit. See you You're in a so bit. You're so thirsty. Welcome back to Trending SA. You can join the conversation with the hashtag Tzah on three. Now, our guest tonight is one of the most powerful props ever seen on the rugby field, dubbed The Beast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, he has dominated that prop position for the Sharks and the Springboks for about 13 years. He has some of the most impressive rugby stats you'll ever see. 117 caps for the Springboks. He is the third most capped Springbok of all time. This is one player you don't mess with. I know that's right. Tendai Mtawarira has cemented his place in the South African Sports Hall of Fame. He joins us now to give us a glimpse into the man behind the machine. Welcome to Training SA, the Beast. Thank you so much for that wonderful uh, uh, intro. I'm uh, really uh, grateful to be on this platform with you guys. Eh? Now, Beast. Um, for, uh, I've always screamed beast when you are playing for the Sharks. Now I get to scream it and you can actually hear me. So I'm going to introduce my question by saying beast. <laughs> A little birdie <laughs> told us that you are studying. What are you studying? Yeah, so here, yeah, man, I've uh, put on my thinking cap since last year. I uh, started uh, uh, this journey towards an MBA with Indy Business School. So uh, uh, at, at the moment, I'm about to finish my postgraduate diploma. Sure. I'm having exams next week, man, and then the MBA starts in June. Yeah. 
songs. <laughs> wow, wow, guys. <laughs> What are you doing with your lives? <laughs> <laughs> so you went into retirement straight after that amazing World Cup win. How has life been outside of the spring box? Uh, you know what? Um, it's been pretty uh, good, you know. Uh, the transition has been uh, quite uh, seamless, you know, because I always knew what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. you know, after my rugby career. Uh, I certainly miss, you know, running out and uh, playing for the green and gold, mm -hmm. representing the Springboks, you know, uh, with passion. And yeah, it's, uh, it, it's it was a special, special journey, you know. Um, you know, I came full circle in my career, and all I wanted to do at the end was win, win the World Cup. So I was so grateful that I could end on the highest of highs. Yep. So I, I think yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of uh, ending on the highest of highs, you know, you played with the Springboks for the longest of time. You have really beautiful moments. I'm sure you built lifelong friendships, you know. Um, what do you miss the most about being with the boys, with the team? I mean, I can imagine what it was like winning and then going to the change room after that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the bonds that uh, I created on the field, you know, uh, with my teammates, uh, I promise you, uh, you know, the, those are bonds for life. You know, and I'm grateful to have... I uh, met so many great characters, you know, guys like Sia, Ibn Etzebeth, mm. you know, guys that I used to spend every single day with. Mm. And, uh, you know, to this day, we speak like every second day, you know, mm. so we've got a really strong relationship. And it's something that I treasure, you know, the camaraderie and the sportsmanship, you know, that you, you have on the rugby pitch, it's special. <laughs> okay, so Zeri, um, that's what I call him in the DMs, guys. Um, so when you're not playing rugby, when you're not working, when you're not macking on me in the DMs, what do you like to do for fun? <laughs> uh, well, you know, um, I actually uh, love to spend time with my family. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that also. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> my kids, they keep me busy, oh, so that's what I do. <laughs> Thanks a lot, producers. <laughs> I'm doing something here. <laughs> oh, man. OK, cool. So the conversation around the greatest athlete of all time also popped onto a timeline. And I'm curious to find out from you, as our very own GOAT, um, we were debating on the socials. I mean, for me, it's definitely Serena Williams. But between Serena, LeBron, Tom Serena, Brady. LeBron Tom Brady. Tiger Woods, and Tom Brady, who would you say is your GOAT or the GOAT? Ooh, uh, for me, you know what? It's pretty simple. It's LeBron James. Yep. Uh, I'm a huge, huge NBA fan, and I've uh, followed, uh, I've followed uh, LeBron James, you know, since he got drafted. So I'm quite, uh, yeah, an avid fan of his. So yeah. Yeah, there are only two two choices there, um, but we're not going to get into that one right now. <laughs> now I know that you're in the uh, Major League Rugby side, Old Glory DC. But I'm kind of curious, right? So when you heard that Rock Nation had bought a stake in the Sharks, mm. I mean, what popped into your mind? You know, was there a bit of, oh, man, you know, I think I missed, the, I missed that, that Rock Nation uh, train. <laughs> did I, did I, you, you know, what, what popped into your mind? No, I, I, you know, what? I, I was super excited. That's the first thing that popped into my mind, you know, thinking about the endless possibilities mm. that the, you know, you know, these guys bring into sport, you know, Rock Nation, and, uh, you know, just basically American brands, you know. So I was really excited for the Sharks brand to really take off, you know, and be known in the U.S. So, uh, yeah, for myself, I missed the boat. I missed the boat, you know. <laughs> but I guess now I can play some sort of a role, you know, um, as yeah. a mentor. But I'm still still quite involved with the Sharks. So, mm, yeah. yes. All right, Beast. Um... Gosh, wow. I just can't get over. Zaddy. I can't get over I'm the thirst Zaddy. on that side. Zaddy. Yeah. Zaddy. So <laughs> I just want to know, out of the upcoming guys that um, in the divisions that, you know, coming into play, uh, who should we look out for? Who is the next beast? Who is the next Sia Kolisi? Like, out of the young upcoming guys. There's a, there's a lot of good young players coming up, you know, and uh, I'm really excited for the future of the Springboks. Mm. I think we are in safe hands. So if I had to really zone in and think of a, um, yeah, a youngster that is going to make it uh, onto the big stage, I think it's Similani. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love his play, his style, you know, um, and what he has done for the Lions. 
and I think he is prime for bigger things, you know. So I definitely would say it's uh, Similani, and uh, yeah, he will be competing for that number thirteen jersey with Lucanio very oh. soon. All right. Okay. So, so we recently found out through IG conversation with the WWE superstar Kofi Kingston that you have a keen interest in wrestling, um, and the name Beast will forever be associated with you on the rugby field. So, if you are actually to become a wrestler, what would your wrestling name be? <laughs> now my wrestling name would be Beast. No, yeah, don't, change the name. <laughs> don't change the name. <laughs> well, listen, so much can be discussed with you, Beast. You're an absolute icon. You're a legend. When we appreciate you and everything you've contributed to the sport. You. Thank you so much for your time <laughs> and thank you for being such a great sport, even with our own leopard here in the studio. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure, okay, and I look forward you. to getting with you. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. You are still tuned in to hashtag Ta on three right here on SABC3. Joining us tonight is an artist. When's that? <laughs> <laughs> what must I say? What are you doing? <laughs> Joining us as an artist has become a household name with crossover appeal. He's become one of Africa's most uh, talented musical treasures. His ability to fuse different genres together to produce absolute fire music has made him a formidable force. Help me please welcome to Training SA, LAA. Yeah. All the way in Nigeria, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm blushing. You look so beautiful. Thank oh, you. Wow. Now I'm blushing. <laughs> Alex, your music is a beautiful blend of Afrobeats, Afropop, and Fuji sounds. But recently, we've seen you cross over into the Mapiano scene with your new single, Go Low. These are all genres that live in the same continent but take up different spaces. What informed this transition? Um, so um, I just always, I've always loved them. Um, the South African music from the house to the Amar piano. Mm -hmm. And then for me, like I was born in Lagos, you know, lived, listening to Afrobeat, you know, started recording, started doing Afrobeat. And I just wanted to fuse those two sounds together because mm -hmm. I've done that before. Um, I did Guara Guara in 2017, and that was inspired by South African um, house music as well. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to, you know, bring something new and, you know, make it fresh and exciting for people to know. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Uh, you know, we always say that the continent is getting smaller and smaller because of the music mm -hmm. and we're becoming closer and closer. Now, Zaza Vibes is uh, your first full body of work since uh, Raza King. Uh, in fact, the, the album for me reads as like a musical journey from, you know, diverse and jazzy instruments that you used and then you move over to the sweet and rustic visuals when you look at your music videos. So, you know, take us through the, the creative process of that body of work. I started recording a fresh new body of work and it was so intentional because I was hands on it. I was at home. I was recording. My producers were in and out as well. So I just wanted to create something sweet, something nice for the um, ladies, something that will, you know, help go through their day, you know, when you're driving. Music, and that's why I created it. And I'm so excited about, you know, the, the reception. I love it. Uh, you launched your independent uh, label, Rasaki Music, back in 2016, and that was a massive, massive move. Um, how did that decision come about? Um, so um, I was signed to um, Whiskey's label, um, Starboy, mm. prior to that. Already, you know, learned a lot from him, you know, from recording, from, you know, um, the business angle and everything. So I just wanted to, you know, start my own, own my own um, music label. And I've been doing well since then, so I'm sad and I'm happy. Cool, so you'll be releasing the video for Sempe next week. And in this video, a little birdie tells us that we get to see more of your style and your swag influences. So what makes fashion such an integral part of your creative expression? I can see you dripping in swag right now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for me, like, I've been born with um, swag. Oh. It's easy for me. To... <laughs> you better get it! I <laughs> love it! <laughs> I've, always been, I've always been fresh, man. If I send you my baby pictures, you see. So um, for me, like... <laughs> I love it. <laughs> for me, I love, I love fashion so much. And then um, even for Golo video, I made sure that I infuse fashion, you know, mm. into it. And everything I do, I, I make sure that I make fashion a very big part of it. 
So for Semper Video, it was a new style, fresh style that I know people will love. And that's just mm. me, man. Just fine music is everything for me. All right, my God. It's amazing. We know you, you worked with Ufocalistic um, in South Africa. Uh, I just want to ask, in terms of other South African artists, who do you have your eye on? In terms of, I want to oh. work with that person. Um, I've been, I've been um, listening to Casper for, mm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I love him. I love his energy. Yeah. I love his music, his sound. So that's somebody that I would really, really love to work with. I love Nas to see them as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, uh, those two, because I feel like they, they do the rap thing very, very well and they can cross over to, they have other sounds. Mm. So um, both of them. Well, we've had them on this show, so I'm definitely sure that they're watching and they're going to give you a call. <laughs> <laughs> I pray, I pray. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. I mean, like we said earlier, you know, we love the fact that the continent is getting smaller, yeah. but we also love the fact that you found some sort of positivity in this time of, of COVID. So we appreciate that in still giving us uh, your energy. So thank you, LAX, yeah. and all the best, and uh, carry on releasing the music, carry on recording, thank and uh, let's see what the future holds. Thank you so much. I'm coming to South Africa soon. Yeah. We'll, so be we'll, 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 we'll be at the end We love okay. it, we love it, we love it. There we go. LAX on Tsar uh, on three. Okay. All right, so as you know, we are in a new marriage with Vodacom and the Everyone's Connected brand campaign. And it's really all about showcasing some of their initiatives um, as far as Vodacom is concerned in connecting people to a better future. If you don't believe us, take a look. These days, we all need a light in our lives. This light is connecting a family who've been apart. This light is learners everywhere, exploring the biggest library in the universe. These lights represent women in dangerous situations, connecting to real help. These lights are people connecting to free healthcare. These small businesses connecting to opportunities for growth. So when you look closer, these lights are not just technology, they are connections for better lives. And we won't stop until everyone is connected. Vodacom. And that's how we come to the end of tonight's episode, Squad. The first week is done. Yes. How are we feeling? In the bag, baby. We're still in good. one piece, good. so I guess it's safe to say for the last time this week, Joe, we did it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you missed any of this week's episodes, be sure to catch the Omnibus right here on <laughs> SNBC3 this Sunday morning. Don't go to church. So that you're up to speed with all the latest trends and topics. Happy Valentine's Day, um, even to those of us who might be saying, oh, beast. <laughs> <laughs> See you next Mary. week, Monday at 6 p.m. on SCBC3. Good night, Mzansi. What?